Welcome, greetings, Luke Smith, RuleVacantLand.com. And uh, today I'm making this video because I'm feeling, <laughs> I'm feeling, you know, beat up. I'm feeling like I've been punched. I feel like I've been kicked between the legs. Um, I feel like I want to puke sometimes. I feel like I've got a bloody nose. It's one of those markets. It's an ouch market, if you will. <laughs> kind of like these birds in the background duking it out. And uh, so what do you do? You know, uh, it's uh, I, I keep working on different deals and putting deals together and some of them work, but lots of them have just been canceling and it's beautiful deals, happy people on both sides of the deal all the way around. Everybody involved seems seems good. And then something's wrong with the finance or where the money's coming from or they don't give me an explanation just uh, something's wrong and it all boils down to the state of the markets and in, in my opinion are just uh, really tough right now. And so we're seeing things like interest rates have been going up, 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 you know, over this last while and just pinching lots of things. Inflation's been flying the cost of cost of goods, cost of services, cost of people, labor, all, all kinds of costs of things have been going up. Availability of those things have been hard to get even at higher costs. Um, and this is translating into transaction volumes that are just like after COVID times falling off a cliff uh, in houses, for example, there, there just aren't very many houses to choose from. People are staying in the old ones. And they're not moving to new ones and, and getting more volume going in the marketplace for all kinds of real estate, everything. And that ripples down to land where people want to build, build houses or commercial, uh, as the industry puts it, a lot of the developers are just pencil down. They don't even want to do, they don't even want to figure out the numbers in today's market. They want to see what's happening out into the future. So, um, at any numbers, it's hard to get deals to happen. <laughs> and so it makes it hard to do land deals in that kind of environment. It's not impossible, but it's just harder. And so I, uh, I also want to talk about what I'm grateful for. Um, not just be negative all the time, right? That's not who I am. That's just who I've, how I've been feeling recently. So I'm grateful for many things I'm grateful for, but I'm going to keep them to industry stuff right now. I'm grateful for the technology and the innovations that we have in our industry, the, the data that we're, that's available. I'm a data guy. I love studying data. Things make more sense when I can back it up by data to me. And um, so that data and technology in lots of different ways I can explain and show and things. It's just, it's better all the time. It's better this week. It's better than a month ago. It's better than six months ago. It's better than years ago. And it just, it uh, allows us to make better decisions, get more accurate and uh, just pull off more deals going forward. Right. In this market over the last uh year, year and a half, two years, I, I haven't had the nerve. People keep calling and say, Luke, I want land here and I want land there. Why don't you have it for sale? COVID took off and, and bought all this stuff out and I didn't have the nerve to go pay higher prices to buy more of it back at prices higher than I just sold it for to turn around and try to resell it again to you guys. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't work. I don't have, I don't have the I don't have the wah to go try to do that. Um, and I don't admire the people that do. <laughs> so it's, I've been stuck uh, not doing that trade and, and innovating and looking at other ways to uh, use the data and technology and information that we have. And while looking at the data, technology and information that we have, that's better than ever um, in lots of ways, like YouTube being able to get this out to the world or other social media platforms like this. Um, we can find deals and we can get them under contract. We could, you know, tell the person that'd like to sell it. I'll try to sell it if I can sell it. If I can find an end user, then I will buy it from you. I will close it with you. I'll pay you cash and deliver it to that end user and keep the difference. But I'm not going to buy it from you at this price and then hope I can go resell it at some higher price later on someday because it's a, it's a falling market. It's hard to do that. It's, uh, it's like swimming against the current instead of with the current. Um, it doesn't make sense. And so I've been doing a lot more of that recently, and I'm grateful that I've been doing that and I've been advising others to do that. And we've done that, not exclusively, but in a large way 
over the 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 last year and a half, two years, and as this market has come together and given me a bloody nose, you know, like ah, <laughs> you know, the uh, deal after deal after deal. I'm very grateful that we're not stuck holding some of those those properties um, on the downside. And in the innovation side of it, it doesn't have to be land anymore. The technology is getting so good. It, we can use buildings for lots of these trades. And we've done the same thing with lots of buildings, commercial buildings and or houses, houses for that matter, and different trades. And so that's that's been nice too. Some of them work and make money and everybody makes money and it all goes great. And other times everything falls apart and I'm just, I feel beat up, but at the same time, I'm not stuck holding the bag. And that allows me to stick around and be ready for tomorrow and the future and to go again and try again, right? And so I'd like to talk about the future um, in these kinds of deals. And uh, before we get there, I want to talk about a little bit of past before we lead into the future. So I uh, I pulled up, going down nostalgic lane here, I pulled up YouTube. Uh, so we're, we're on YouTube, and I'm just looking at the history, and this is my YouTube channel. And uh, we've got up here, it's kind of small numbers. I, I, I wasn't sure of the numbers, I was just checking 1.4 thousand videos, guys. <laughs> we're at 1,400 videos. I don't remember making that many videos, but I guess I've made over 1,400 videos and posted them on YouTube. I've posted a lot of videos that are not public, um, made specifically for certain people or a certain group of people or delivered in one way or another that's not public. This 1,400 videos are the public ones. Um, and one of the oldest videos that's on here, so we've got some newer ones. We're talking about commercial properties and sales pitches, which I think could be entertaining and enlightening if you want to watch some of these. But some of the oldest ones that are on there, um, talking about nostalgia and going down memory lane, one of the oldest ones that's on there, I was thinking it was the oldest, but it's actually the fourth oldest one on there is, uh, let me see if I pull this thing up in the background. It's, um, so if you just go to my YouTube channel and click oldest, you can get there and go watch this video. It's called, uh, it says sold, but I added that later because people kept asking questions. Uh, 10 acres in Elko County, Nevada with trees and mountain view. <laughs> and so I, this was the first sales pitch video I made on YouTube. And what it was is I, you, at the time, this was eight years ago, you could post YouTube videos on eBay to describe products. And so I put this piece of property on eBay that I got for signing up for Land Academy program to learn how to do land trading deals. They gave me this 10 acres uh, as a sign-up bonus to get into their program. So I didn't really pay for the land, I guess, you know, but so I basically got it for free or as a bonus. And um, I put it on eBay for a dollar to test how it works, to see what it sells for, right? I don't know what this stuff sells for. How am I supposed to know? It was really hard to get data. It's a lot harder to get data then than it is now. And so I put it on eBay for a dollar and it sold for um, uh, $533.88 or $0.33 cents or something like that. Over $3,000. I'm going to get the exact number wrong, but it had a bunch of threes. And one number went higher than the threes. It, people outbid each other and went for it. I was hooked. I, you know, I got that land and like how many more of those could I buy? So I started sending out letters. Uh, 10 acres in Elko County. There's a lot of 10 acres in Elko County. I sent out letters to all of them. I said, I want to buy your land for $1,000. You know, I started buying them for $1,000. and I sold those and I said, I'll pay $1,200 to send out some more mailers. And I get more properties and I sold those and $1,500 send out more mailers, get more of those, sell those things. And um, eventually the price you can sell them for goes like this. And the price that you got to pay for them, you know, goes like this and it doesn't make sense anymore. But uh, started going to other markets. Where could I do that in other markets? This property, that property, the next one, the next one, the next one, one right? And started doing it in lots of places of America and figuring out where I could buy uh, properties in volume at really good prices and go sell them not just on eBay, but on YouTube and on uh, wherever, Craigslist, every website you can find on the internet that you can post properties, just post them everywhere and sell them, make it really cheap, easy land, right? And so we've done that. We sold thousands of properties over the last eight years 
of doing that. And so there's there's the past. The future has worked. If you go watch the history of those videos, they get to be bigger properties. They get to be fancier properties. They get to be bigger dollar properties, more tailored to where a house goes instead of a camper. And um, the returns on them get to be bigger dollars, uh, maybe not as much percentage, but bigger dollars, less percent as as the quality goes. And in today's market, as the markets are scary to do these kinds of trades in, in lots of ways, um, I think we should be going after the highest quality stuff possible. We should be fleeing and running and, and targeting quality, 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 quality. And so I think the future, and we can do it in today's market, which is hard to do in the past, is that we can go after the best quality stuff. And I think that's the future. So uh, I've done some videos in the past. We did some live videos. I don't think that 1400 counts all the live videos. If I you got me scratching my head, I don't think it covers live videos. We did lots of live videos in the past too. And I started offering to you guys, and a lot of people took me up on it, was mailers. And I offered mailers. I said, for $1 a mailer, I will do the data, I'll compose the letter, I'll figure out who to send it to, and uh, I'll make an offer. I'll make an offer to buy their land, and if they get back to me and accept that, you know, the odds of them actually accepting it are like zero. It's a tiny percent, you know, some little tiny piece of the people actually accept the offers. So most of those dollars just you might as well set them on fire. They just go poof into smoke. But some of them come through and some of them work and uh, they can pay really well. So in the past, I offered a dollar a mailer. We split the profits 50-50. Um, and then I did a bunch of that, when, and a lot of people made good money off of those. Some people didn't make any. Sorry if you're listening, you didn't make any money off of some of my mailers. But a lot of people made really good money off of those mailers and going along for the ride with me. I felt like I did a lot of work and a lot of energy and a lot of, uh, a lot of um, time and energy and work to produce those mailers, make those mailers happen and pull off the deals and do the marketing and the full, go full circle to give up half the profits of them for the guys to put up the money. And so some of those guys were sending in $1,500 and I was sending them back a check for 20 grand or something. Other guys would send in a check for $5,000 and I'd send them back, you know, on one deal, it'd be more than $50,000 would be their cut. Some of the guys got over hundred thousand dollar cuts on like one deal, and you know they'd send in ten or fifteen grand, and they'd you know, one deal they'd make over a hundred grand, and I'd be like, oh geez, maybe these numbers are a little too skewed, <laughs> you know. And then they try to send it all back to me for more mail, and I got overwhelmed, and I wasn't super fast at making it happen. So I changed the numbers. I went with lower percentage rates of payouts, you know, like twenty or thirty percent kinds of payouts. And I eventually started catching up and uh, caught up with those guys. And in the 20 and 30% payouts, I still sent out some $50,000 plus checks to the guys that were getting like a quarter of the profits for putting up the money for the mail. And um, these are highlighted numbers. These are not normal. They're not average. These are like awesome ones that came through that could totally happen going forward. And I think we could get bigger ones going forward because I've learned a lot off of these. But uh, the deals changed. So I've set up a little fund and I would like capital to flow into that fund that we could use on these deals. And so I think a way that we could do that is I could offer these mailers again. And this time, instead of 50-50 or 25-75 or some percentage, I'll give you all the profit that is coming back to me. Now, this is net profit off the mailers. This is net profit. This is not gross profit. Gross profit would be before I got to finance it and pay for the money and pay for things along the way. Net profit is after I pay for things along the way, I pay for money to make it happen and knock it home. This is net off of what would come back to me if this, this were my deal. And um, so the net back to me number off of those mailers um, Instead of sending you a check, I would like to put it into the fund. And so I would like to you to put up money to do that. And so I think I'm going to open this up to the first 50,000 mailers that people are, are open and interested in, in buying. Um, I will use the funds off of those, 100% of the funds off of those to go 
uh, into the fund. Now, when it goes into the fund, this fund has a one-year lock. So you can't get the money back for at least a year. No, well, maybe you don't want it back ever, and I'm just going to send profits, you know, bonuses, interest distributions along the way. The way it's written is it's it's a debt fund, so I'm going to be paying you interest along the way. But the way my mentality works is I want you to send more money, and so I'm going to send bonuses as deals happen, and you know, per, lining up to the deals that are happening and they're going off. It's like, hey, we got some extra money. Here's a bonus. Hey, we got some more money. Here's another bonus. Hey, we got some more money. Here's another bonus. And as I can, as the deals work, and as if and when I decide that I want to and I can, and trust me, I want to because I want you to tell your friends, family, and others to send in more money to build this thing up. It'll give us a capital advantage to do even more of these deals. It'll be in everybody's best interest to do more of these deals and uh, get more distributions to flow. And so that's what I would like to do. I would like to open this up to um, the first 50,000 uh, mailers that people are up to, and I will personally put these together, send these things out, and make these happen. Um, now, um, I, I would, in the past, I've had different minimums. This time I'm asking for a 5,000 uh, mailer minimum. That's $5,000. So don't send me a check for $100, but you know, $5,000 or more if you're up for that. And I think it should be more like 10,000 because why 10,000? Because I think if we do a full 10,000 mailers, we got a much more statistical chance of pulling off one of these deals or multiple deals in the same mailer. And uh, I'm going to go after the best niches that I can find and shots and, and uh, hammer these things home. I think I can do more of them in this market because the response rate is lower um, my databases have already flagged a lot of the people who complain the most. Um, and so we keep them out of, out of the mailers. Um, I've already isolated a lot of the properties that are the ones I don't want to do. I take those out of the mailers. Um, I look at statistics of the ones that are, have the most propensity to sell the, you know, where we can get deals. I've been building the databases up over the last eight years in a very strategic way to get more accurate at doing these mailers. And so everything I've learned and everything I've databased over time comes together to pull these mailers off. And I think that'll make it a, a much straighter shot. Now, once the funds go through and we do some, some traditional land trades, classic, like we've got all kinds of history of doing here, um, then the profits, I'll tell you, okay, it's this amount, you know, and we got this deal and that deal, and maybe three deals come out of one of these mailer sets, or maybe five, or maybe none. It might be none. It might really be none. It, I might just fall flat on my face and none of them work. Sometimes that happens, um, especially in this market. But I think this is a great market to take advantage of that. Other people need money too. They need to sell stuff, liquidate stuff, and there's always life events that happen that people open to selling today that weren't open yesterday. And so as we deliver those sales pitches, more people come back with land that we can go uh, turn into deals and sell. You don't have to fund the land. I've got uh, funds for the land. I got partners that are willing to fund the land. I got phone numbers of others that are willing to fund the land. We don't, you don't have to fund the land. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. And it's just the funding of the mailers is what I'm asking for. So then we take that money and we move it into the fund. And this is where I think it gets really fun. Um, okay, so I made a little, um, I made a little website, sunrulevacantland.com. It's kind of hidden. There's services over here and under services, it says land with Luke. So that's the name of the, the fund, is Land with Luke. And then down at the bottom of all this stuff, I'm looking at it on the screen. It's like I wrote too much there, but I wrote the story. It just ask for email, um, name, address, contact information, stuff like that. Fill this out. I'll, if you're interested in just skipping the mailers and going straight to the fund, I'll call you. We'll talk about the, the details of the fund, and um, I hope to get you involved in the fund. Now, let's say you did the mailers and the money goes to the fund. I'll put a link to that in the description here below to get to that field. But so let's say you get to the, you do the mailers and you go to the fund. Um, I think, you know, these are downtimes in the market. 
And uh, that makes buyers be the drivers. So the sellers are having a hard time selling and uh, we wanna be the ones taking advantage of this market, right? We're the contrarians. We always wanna be on the side that's the most advantageous. And so we wanna be the buyers in this market. Um, now, what do we buy that we can sell? You know, that's, that's always the question. So in a lot of the asset classes that have the best technology and data that are going right now that make the most sense to me, it's high traffic retail. And I say that because it's not apartments where a lot of other people are stacked on. It's not um, offices where I don't know how to, it's over my head. And that's a totally different marketplace. High traffic retail, we've got cell phone traffic, we've got car traffic, we've got credit card sales, we've got debit card sales. When you can start seeing the transactions that are happening at retail shops, you can see where people are shopping and where they're not shopping. And you say, yeah, everyone's shopping on the internet. Why would they go to a, a shop anymore? That's not true. A lot of these shops are, are like taken off like a rocket and they're working with the internet and they're marketing the stuff on the internet and people are going to the shop. And it might be something like a Chick-fil-A. It might be something like a uh, an Aldi grocery store or who knows, there's a lot of different brands. And there's always brands that are down and out. In today's market, it's Burger King and Hardee's and maybe a Steak and Shake and some 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 of those kinds of brands for fast food shops are puking up locations all over the place. Rite Aid Pharmacy. Walgreens is even puking up some of them. You can take these old pharmacies and turn them into something. Um, and there's always brands that are doing really well. I was just looking at a salad and go this morning. It's like a couple hundred locations just come out of nowhere. And we had a deal to sell one of the properties in the past to a salad and go. And it's like, they're, they're rocking and rolling. You know, they're going for it. And uh, other brands, lots of different brands are doing awesome in today's markets. And brands that just started like in the last couple of years even that weren't there five years ago. They're taking advantage of this information technology and they're just zinging, growing like crazy. They're eating up locations. They're bulldozing stuff. They're building theirs. Uh, they're revamping others, turning it into theirs. So we can take we can take the vacant QSRs, the quick service restaurants, like a like a Burger King, for example, and figure out who goes there with the technology that we have. We can send mailers to the people that go there. And I've done this. I've done this a bunch of times. You can send mailers to, you know, this person should be renting the property. This this operator should be renting the property because their brand's not in this local market. The neighbors that are shop that are eating in this local market, when they're eating in this this market at these shops, they're usually also eating at this shop and other markets. But this shop is not here in this market, and you can come up with like a um, synthetic how much sales they should do there based on that kind of traffic and data of the area, and see what kind of sales that this shop should do there and charge rent accordingly. Like where else can you do that? The, that technology is amazing. It's awesome. It's beautiful. I love it. I want to run with that some more and do more of those deals. So finding vacant QSRs and getting them under contract with a long contingency period to figure out who goes there, market to who goes there, offer them the moon and finance to polish and change the store and make it theirs. Uh, and taking their lease on the back of that with their name, their credit rating, and selling it in the marketplace at a much higher price than the vacant, you know, buying vacant and selling full is a spread that is uh, a value add spread that is really hard to argue with. Doing that is, is can work in any markets. And if you have the right price on the exit, it might not be the price everybody else likes, but it's the price that the market is trading at. And we're doing this in today's markets. We can price our stuff accordingly to today's markets. And on a contract with a refundable deposit, we can deliver it when it works. And when it doesn't work, we say sorry and get the money back and try it again, maybe at a lower price or a different, you know, rejig the numbers to get it to work. And we can do it on multiple properties at the same time. And maybe one out of three works or one out of five works or one out of I don't know how many works. But when we pull the money together to try multiples of these and one of them works, we all make money. And so that is a, a piece uh, of the fund that I would like to 
emphasize. The other part is um, ground leases. So I see some of these locations where um, I just saw a Chick-fil-A take out an office depot. Like, come on, you know, the office depot is a, a good size footprint of a building. And um, this was in Livonia, Michigan. They just bulldozed the office depot and put the Chick-fil-A drive through in there because the Chick-fil-A sells more than an office depot because Chick-fil-A can pay more rent than an office depot because in this market, Chick-fil-A means more than an office depot. And there's a whole bunch of traffic. It's like 70,000 cars a day or something out front. They bulldoze that sucker and they got enough room to put a Chick-fil-A in there. So like seeing those kinds of plays and targeting them with a rifle, I'm not saying Chick-fil-A is the name, but there's, there's lots of names that are doing those kinds of plays. I can see it in the data. I can lock them up under contracts the same way as the uh, vacant quick service restaurants, the QSRs, and then go to who ought to do it and say, here it is. You need a little bit of this and a little bit of that to pull it off and offer it to them and they will uh, ground lease it. To them, that's 100% financing. They get the property for free. They're just signing a contract with their name and their credit rating that later on someday when they get it into production, you know, when they get their shop built and sales are going and maybe two months after they're up and going, they start paying rent for the rest of forever. That's uh, having that papered up can go sell on the markets at specific prices. And today's specific prices change tomorrow and the next and the next day. But putting all that paper together, that stack of paper, you know, buy it, lease it, sell it, and delivering it all at the same time can take out a nice big spread in between back to the money that set it up to make it happen. And so that money that sets it up to make it happen is what I want to be to have in the fund. And the more of it, the more of these deals I could set the table for to knock over. And so I'm working on that and um, working on those deals. And I'd like to do more of those. And that's what I would like to use the money from these mailers for. And so I think this would be a compounding way to move capital into a fund and do these deals. If you follow along, if you have questions, um, please hit the comments, hit questions, call me, my phone number, call me on my cell phone. My phone number is 760 274 7711. I'll put my phone number in the comments or not in the description below. I'll also put a link to the um, the the form to go sign up for the fund. It's not sign up, it's sign up for a consultation about talking about the fund and see if it's right for you. Um, for you and I to work together on this, uh, the risk tolerances and regulations and everything involved. And uh, yeah, so my phone number will be there if you want to do mailers or feel free to email me as well. Um, there's that same form. Just use that same form for the fund. There's a comment section. Say, I want to do mailers to go into the fund. And so I think that would be that would be great. That would be fun. That would be it would mean a lot to me in a time where I'm feeling beat up by this market. <laughs> and uh um, but I think, you know, as I'm feeling beat up, others are too, and we can take advantage of that and, um, we can do it working together. So thank you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And, uh, see you in the next one, Luke Smith.